Battlefield 2042 has without a doubt been one of the biggest disappointments in gaming history. It was arguably the most hyped up game of the year, yet only two weeks after launch it lost 70% of its total player count, and today, that number sits at just over 90%. Calling it a flop would be a compliment, because Battlefield 2042 isn't just the biggest flop of the year, it's a complete failure. So to understand why Battlefield 2042 is such a massive failure, I think we first have to determine what actually makes a good Battlefield game. Because it's not microtransactions and it sure as hell isn't the specialist. So what actually makes a good Battlefield game then? Because I don't think there's just some flawless masterpiece that consists of an amazing soundtrack, beautiful maps, non-stop chaotic action, and... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Battlefield 1's trailer alone could have an entire video made on it. It featured a beautiful, epic soundtrack with cinematic action sequences that rival superhero movies. So to say Battlefield 1 was hyped up would be an extreme understatement. But the real question was, did it deliver on the hype? And to that I say, absolutely. Lutely. Battlefield 1 is, in my opinion, the absolute best Battlefield experience that you can have. It was the definition of casual fun. Battlefield 1 thrust the player into beautiful maps with thrilling fast-paced 32v32 large-scale battles in action, and it had wannabe kamikaze pilots crashing down everywhere, and these quote behemoth vehicles that offered the losing side a quick turnaround to get themselves back into the game. Battlefield 1 was honestly just chaos, but it was chaos done right. Sure, you had the occasional player just spamming artillery in the back of their spawn, or some cuck sitting in the dreadnought for the whole game, but honestly, that was half the fun. There was nothing cooler than hearing that chilling narration on Foul Forest right before storming its sandy beaches with artillery raining down on your squad from every direction. And honestly, I think Battlefield 1 is the most immersed I have ever been while playing a video game, and how could it not be? It really felt like I was thrust into World War 1 with bombs raining down everywhere, all the while I'm charging some random 9 year old with my bayonet, but maybe instead of Foul, you were playing on Argon Forest, and with literal hellfire burning the trees around you and soldiers surrounding your squad posted up on the chaotic bridge, things had never felt more intense. The point is, Battlefield 1 is Battlefield done right and is, in my opinion, what every Battlefield should strive to be. Just fast-paced, intense, chaotic warfare. So how does this relate to Battlefield 2042? Well, it's like I said, Battlefield 1 is Battlefield done right and Battlefield 24 is not exactly that. And I think one of the main reasons for Battlefield 2042 being such a failure is its extremely messy development cycle. Because Battlefield 2042 might have one of the worst development cycles that I've ever seen. To start it off, due to Battlefield 5 not exactly performing as intended, as well as EA's heavy push to make DICE primarily focus on Firestorm, a majority of senior devs and just regular devs in general had left DICE as they were being limited with their creative freedom just because EA wanted to chase trends. And yeah, just in case you forgot, Firestorm was Battlefield's Battle Royale mode and I can't really blame you for forgetting it. As EA kept forcing DICE and their devs to chase trends like Fortnite or Apex, frustration grew heavily with the senior devs at DICE eventually causing an estimated 100 devs to leave early in Battlefield 2042's development cycle. This was a huge loss not to just Battlefield, but also DICE and EA in general. See, Battlefield, as well as the majority of EA's IPs, are created and run on the notoriously difficult to learn and code Frostbite engine. And normally, as far as Battlefield games go, this isn't a huge issue, but since over 100 senior devs had left DICE between the release of Battlefield 5 and the early stages of production with Battlefield 2042, it was clear very early on that Battlefield 2042 was going to have a lot of development issues. And it definitely did, as EA was forced to hire a bunch of new devs that hadn't had a ton of experience coding on the frostbite engine, if any. But things were about to get worse. Something a bit unexpected was about to force everyone inside their homes for the next year and a half, and I can't say its name, but I think we all know what I'm talking about. This was arguably Battlefield 2042's biggest setback, and generally speaking, this shouldn't have been as big an issue as it was, but when new programmers are trying to learn the code from home on one of the most difficult engines to code on with little help or support from EA, then of course Battlefield 2042 was going to have a lot of issues, because generally speaking, the average of a little under 2 year dev cycle for a Battlefield game has always barely been enough time to complete the game. However, if you combine this with an experienced staff who barely had enough equipment to properly code the game, run it, and test it, then things are definitely going to get messy. 
and it definitely did. Battlefield 2042 had a bunch of setbacks in its production and it was very clear that this game most likely wouldn't be done on time. So the main question is, if Battlefield 2042 wasn't ready to come out, why did it release? Well, this comes down to the classic business strategy of big corporations not giving a shit about you, your feelings, or even putting out a good product. Long gone are the days of having to develop a decent game so it sells. I mean, at this point, I could probably make any game with some waifu girl shooting Russians and I probably make millions, but here's the difference between a small company developing games and big companies developing games. When a small company develops a game, they need to put passion into their game, they need the game to be big, to be special, and most importantly, to be good in order for it to sell. However, when a company like EA puts out a game, as long as the trailer gets everyone hyped, then they know they'll sell enough, so who cares if it's a good game. Just rush it out and charge them $60 for a game where you can't make it past the loading screen without crashing. But after Battlefield 2042's trailer took the gaming industry by storm, EA knew that no matter what, this game would sell. And I genuinely can't think of any game that has ever had as much hype from one Battlefield trailer than Battlefield 2042 did. And then, the beta came out. Now, generally speaking, I'd seen extremely mixed reviews about the beta, but personally, I think it sucked. It was essentially unplayable. I remember my first five matches were me just trying to walk five feet without my game crashing from the lag and frame rate drops. And I thought, surely this has to be my fault, and a company would never put out a game that you know, is this broken, but lo and behold, when I looked up how to fix it, everyone said, yeah, don't worry, you just need to play the game for a few hours, and then it should run smoothly. As if this was an acceptable issue for a game with a budget of two billion dollars. Yes, two billion dollars. But, to their credit, it got better, and I would never say that the game ran smoothly, but I don't ever think that I got higher than 30 frames on medium graphic settings, and admittedly, I don't have the most powerful computer in the world, but it should be more than capable to run a consistent 50 frames on medium graphic settings. But, these are just optimization issues, so they should be easily fixable in the time between the beta's release and the actual game's release, right? But, what about the actual gameplay? Well it wasn't any better. Now I'd heard that there were a few glitches in the beta, and that's to be expected, but oh my god, this had to have been the most broken game I'd ever played. I mean, seriously, I couldn't play a single match without my game crashing, my gun not firing, visual glitches, falling through the map, my screen freezing, and so much more. This game was far from enjoyable, hell, it was far from playable, and fans knew that Battlefield wasn't ready to come out yet, so they begged EA for a delay. But did Battlefield get its desperately needed delay? Well, yeah, so what's the issue? Well, it was only delayed by a single month. Yes, this game only had a month of further polish. A majority of games that were developed in the pandemic had delayed their releases by anywhere from three to six months, but God forbid that EA misses its Christmas sales, so instead of further delaying the game, they decided to bring in another team to help polish the game so they could just rush it out. Now generally speaking, missing the Christmas sales for a game as hype up as this would be a huge loss for most companies, but this isn't most companies, this is one of the biggest companies in the world with one of the biggest fan bases in the world and this game would have sold fine. So after the beta came out, fans begged EA to delay the game. Fans begged EA and DICE to finish up the game so it didn't come out an unplayable buggy mess, but there were others who weren't nearly as worried. In fact, I even saw some people defending the beta saying things like, well, this build is months old, so of course the actual game is going to release better. And I even saw some inbred saying, oh, don't worry, all Battlefield games release like this, it'll be fine. Like what? How is it not only understood but accepted by an entire community that a game can just come out unplayable? I mean, I guess I can't bash them too hard because I actually had a similar mindset. So I pre-ordered the gold version for a staggering $90 and came back on release day. I was finally able to play the game that would save FPS gaming, and when I loaded it up on release night, filled with excitement, reminiscing over my Battlefield 1 days, I was hooked for all of 5 minutes, then I instantly refunded the game after it crashed. Now I don't think we can fully blame the devs because they faced more than their fair share of issues, but even still, the state that this game was released in is unacceptable for any company. I mean, EA charged you $70 if you bought Battlefield on a next-gen console. $70 for this, and I paid $90 for 2 minutes of fun and more game crashes than Cold War calls me. The hitboxes were broken, vehicles were unusable, and tons of features including scoreboards, server browser, team deathmatch, and so much more were all missing. 
I was absolutely furious with the state of Battlefield 2042, and I wasn't alone. In just two days, Battlefield 2042 would be the 8th lowest rated game on Steam. And just two weeks after Battlefield's launch, over 70% of its player base would be completely lost. And currently, that number is as high as 90% and it's dropping more every day. Even EA stock dropped 18% as a result of 2042's launch. Battlefield 2042 is truly the definition of a flop. Whether it was its early stages of production where devs left because of the limited creative freedom or its later stages of rushed development to reach a deadline, 2042 shows us that even with all the resources in the world, companies like EA will always prioritize profits over quality. And it's really sad to see, because I genuinely believe that Battlefield was going to be the game to turn gaming what? around. I thought it would be this unbelievable experience that could even be EA's magnum opus, but it wasn't. It was just disappointing. And most of the time, games that receive this much hype are. Games that are hyped up and released by huge AAA companies will always get rushed so they can meet deadlines and sell. We saw it with Cyberpunk last year, we saw it again with 2042 this year, and we'll probably see it again with whatever big release comes out next year. It's really sad to see the state that gaming is in, but unfortunately it's just the way that things are right now. So Battlefield 2042, the game that was supposed to save casual gaming. Undoubtedly, it did have serious potential to be the biggest game of the year, I mean hell, maybe even the biggest game of the decade, but it just fell flat. This was due in part to extremely poor management, a rushed time frame, but honestly, I think the game was over ambitious. And it's a rare thing to hear someone ever say that an EA game is over ambitious or innovative, but Battlefield 2042 had a good game in there somewhere. And honestly, if it had six more months of polish, then I think it likely could have been that enthralling experience we were all hoping for, but unfortunately, like most video games these days, it was just disappointing. It's sad to see that big companies like EA and Ubisoft chase negative trends rather than create positive ones, but honestly, games like Battlefield enable other companies to release products like this. Or or do they? Because Battlefield 2042 definitely flopped and even Battlefield 5 flopped and both those games were far from complete. Although it did sell the second most copies of any Battlefield ever in the first week, I don't believe that it's made its money back yet. And of course, I don't have EA's financials so I can't confirm it, but this game cost $2 billion to make. But even if we highball the guess of total copies sold to about $10 million, this would still only mean that EA made $600 million off of total copies. And if we try to guess microtransactions, let's just say everyone that bought the game also paid $60 in microtransactions. This would still only mean that EA made $1.2 billion off of Battlefield 2042, which seems like a lot, but they spent over $2 billion to make it. But honestly, I'm glad the 2042 flop, because it proves that companies like EA can't just get away with putting out unfinished products and make back all their money. And it proves that Battlefield 2042 isn't just a flop, it's a complete failure. Thank you guys so much for watching the full video and I'm not gonna beg for subscribers so here's my good friend to do it instead. So please whatever. Also, I would not stop you from liking the video. But big thank you to Tom Henderson for really helping me make this video. He made an amazing 30 minute video fully detailing Battlefield 2042's messy development cycle so you guys should really go check that out. Also, I have a ton of videos planned for the future, so make sure you guys stop by every Saturday and see what's going on. Anyway, I'll see you in breads later. Peace.